Hello there, my name is Richard from Silent Peak and welcome to this tutorial on how to use Gigapixel AI. Now today we're using the very latest version of Gigapixel AI as of 2023 and this is version 6.3.3. Let's begin. So we're going to click on browse images, select our image, in this case a 20 megapixel raw file and now we're going to click on open. And here we have our image. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is select the amount of upscaling we wish to do. And to that end, you can click on any of these presets. So for example, we can upscale by 0.5, two times, four times, and six times. And indeed, specify any custom value between 0 0.20 and 6.94. Alternatively, you can specify the exact width and height of your photo in either pixels, centimeters, or inches. We now have the means to crop our image within Gigapixel AI, and this is a really nice feature because it reduces our dependence of separate photo editing software, meaning less likelihood of jumping from one application to another. So right now we have um, everything set to automatic. We can see we have these yellow lighting bolt symbols and it's assessed my image and thinks that the art and CG filter is the most appropriate and it's dialed in these particular settings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go full out for this tutorial and go for a 600% upscale. And there we go. Now it looks very small because it's only on 9% zoom. If we blast into 100%, we can get a really nice close look at our image. And so far, it's not looking too bad. Now to show you how far we've come, we have various different views at the top of the screen. We can begin with the split view and that enables us to sort of slide from the original image to our newly upscaled image, just like so. We also have a side-by-side -side view, which enables us to sort of pan and view both the original and upscaled image simultaneously. And then last but not least is the comparison view. Now I'm pretty sure that despite this being our sort of automatic setting, I might be able to do better than this by choosing my own settings. So to that end, I am going to go into the comparison view. Here I can view the effects of four different AI models simultaneously. So the AI models are standard lines, art and CG, HQ, low res, and very compressed. So I'm going to begin by clicking here on the art CG, we can see that's now highlighted in blue. And I'm gonna substitute the art and CG model for the standard AI model. And I'm gonna have a look and see what that looks like. Now that looks so-so, let's have a look at lines and change this one to HQ, as in high quality. And that one isn't looking so great. And low resolution, very compressed. So at the moment, I'm thinking that standard might be the best one to start working with. So having found my desired AI model, I'm gonna go back to the single view to give me the maximum screen real estate. And I'm gonna start tweaking with these different settings. Now we can see here, we have our automatic mode. And as soon as I adjust the setting manually, you'll notice that that will disappear again. To re-enable the default automatic settings, we can just simply click back on that lighting bolt. But let's have a go at doing something of our own. So I'm just altering suppress noise, which is just a term for noise reduction. Remove blur, which is kind of a negative way of saying uh, sharpening. And again, we can just dial in the settings until we kind of like what we see. Now we are looking at this at one to one pixel level. So what we want to do is if we make it look good here, it's going to look excellent at any kind of normal viewing distance. So let's see how far we've come. We'll go back into our split view and you can see that's what we began with. And this is what we've got. So a major improvement. And I'm going to drop back to a sort of 50% view just so I can see 
what the image looks like at a more sensible viewing image. Now, as you can imagine, this is going to produce a truly gigantic print. So a 600% upscale is probably overdoing it, but let's just do it anyway. And the last thing I want to show you is the face recovery feature. So more recent editions of Gigapixel AI feature a face recovery edition. In this case, it evaluates the photo and if it finds a face, it will enable the feature. You cannot use this feature with a picture without a face, as you might expect. Here we can grab our face recovery slider, just a single slider, and we can pull it all the way to the right, which effectively sends the feature into overdrive. And in effect, basically blows up, blurs away all of our processing. And then as we sort of dial back, the effect will weaken until ultimately it's gone entirely. Now in this case, I think a tiniest amount of face recovery is gonna serve as well. And there's no real secret to this, guys and gals. It's just a case of messing around until your eye likes what it sees. And my eye likes what it sees there. So here we are with 50% view. Once again, let's review how far we've come. So this is our new upscaled image. And this is the original upscale, uh, the original non-upscaled image. Pardon me. As you can see, we've got rid of a bit of noise, a bit of posterization, and enhanced the detail, but not to the extent where the image is starting to look too unnatural. And at a normal viewing distance, this image is going to look great. So having finished our upscale, that leaves us just with one task, which is to save our image. Now, by default, you will not save over your original file, but you'll be creating an upscaled copy. To what end we have various different settings. So we can save as JPEGs, TIFFs, PNG, and DNG. So these are ideal if you're going straight to publishing. In other words, you're preparing a file to print or you are using it for social media. And then there's DNG, which is an open raw format. So if you plan on taking your upscaled image and loading it into Lightroom or your favorite photo editor, if you save it as a DNG, you will enjoy all the usual benefits of editing a raw file. In this case, we're going to go for JPEG. We can set our compression anywhere from sort of 10 to, uh, to zero in terms of quality. We can give it a file name. In this case, it's just used the same file name plus six times, very instructive. We have various different color profiles for Adobe, Apple, and so forth. And of course, the save directory. Source just means it's gonna save this image right next to the original file. We're gonna click save. We wait just a moment as that takes place. But otherwise, we are done. Now, I hope you found that tutorial useful. And if you would like to try Gigapixel AI on your own photos, you definitely should. And to that end, there is a link in the description below to your free Gigapixel AI trial. My name's Richard from Silent Peak. I hope you found that useful and I wish you a very good day. Bye-bye.